Ayana, thanks for having me. I love that introduction with the music and the numbers. <laughs> it's yeah, very nice. so we can kind of, you know, come down a little bit and connect with spirit. Yeah, hi everyone. I see everyone up there. This is so nice to be able to um, join from te this technology. So I see everyone. Beautiful faces. Hi, so happy to be here. And we are so happy you are here. It's a lot of happiness. And your book is about happiness. You are the trailblazer of happiness. <laughs> and I love the way you put that on the in the web page. Yeah. When you put the description, I put it on the top. I was like, oh, she's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, it's funny because um, the one that started that whole thing of that I'm a happiness teacher is... D. Patrick Miller, which um, if you're not familiar, he's the one that published um, Gary Renard's book, The Disappearance oh. of the Universe. He was the original one. And he's the one that actually helped me publish Live Your Happy. And when he first discovered me online, he would say, you need to write a book because you are happiness this, happiness that. The course needs something light and a light approach. And that's how it started. So now I've just, I run with it now. And for me, it's great because I really feel that the course is teaching us to come back to that happiness, to that joy. So for me, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in too. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, so tell us, how did the course come into your life? Well, um, many of you, I'm sure, maybe are familiar with Marianne Williamson's book, A Return to Love. And I found this book in the 90s, actually around 1990, so a very long time ago. I was in a very um, pivotal time in my life. I was coming into my teenage years, to my 20s, and I was having some sort of rebound and depression in becoming an adult. And it was very difficult for me. Um, now I have to be big and I have to take care of myself and it was like a lot of different things going on my family was very protective and did a lot of things for me so I felt like I had to grow up and was going through a lot of um, emotions and I found her book at the bookstore and if like you know Anna in the book she talks about Course in Miracles a lot she refers to it as the blue book and um, she talks about it on and on and I got curious but I wouldn't do anything about it till five years later that I was at a unity church, which unity churches are, are all around the world, basic more, more in America, more in the US. And these churches, unity churches are non-denominational and they support the Course in Miracles groups. So a lot of churches in America actually have a Course in Miracles groups going on on Sundays and different times of the week. So um, I ended up going to a ch unity church and they were doing a workshop on the Course in Miracles. This was five years later again. And when I heard of Course in Miracles, I said, oh, that's that book that the Jewish lady, Marianne Williamson, was talking about in Return to Love. So I put the two and two together and I said, you know what? I'm going to go check it out and see. And there was this guy. His name is Gil, heavy set guy. He was he was writing on a, a board and he said um, basically the Course in Miracles principles. And I was sitting down and he said, um, well, the Course in Miracles, basically, um, the world is an illusion. Um, it's talking about that we're one. The separation has not occurred. We're dreaming. And then he went on to say, and forgiveness is one of the biggest teachings of the Course. And what it teaches is, is that all, all that you should remember is the love that you gave and you received. All else is an illusion. And he said, nothing can really ever happen to you. You know, and then you're never the victim of the world that you see. And Anna, I fell off my chair. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean that this is an illusion? What do you mean that? I mean, it was just all my thoughts. I felt like I felt confused. But at the same time, within that confusion, I felt at home, which is where I felt also at the Unity Churches, because the Unity Churches are inclusive, like they include everyone. There's no crosses. I'm getting goosebumps. There's no crosses on the wall because they don't want to just focus on the crucifixion of Jesus. So the church per se, Unity, is like that. And then I was in A Course of Miracles group and I felt at home. I was like, even though I don't understand nothing about this, it feels like my path. 
And that was in 2005. Then I would go on to um, go to a Course of Miracles group there every day. Uh, not every day. It's like, I think it was every Tuesday, which I loved. And then I would begin to studying it on my own and um, having a lot of difficulties practicing it and most importantly, living it. This is why as a teacher now, Anna, I'm very adamant about the practice and also helping people where, where I struggled which is the complete application without reservation or any more exceptions, which was my issue. So I would go on to study the course by myself. And then around 2012, I would say maybe between 2009 and 2012 is when I would become and get this download to be a teacher of God. And that's when it all began for me. Wow, uh, we are also all into the practical implications to 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 actually live a course in miracles. So, so tell us more about happiness and the course and the practical application. Well, um, first things first is I want to let everyone know, and I'm sure you all know this. I'm just reiterating it: is that God's will for us is to be happy, you know, and it's said in the lessons. There's no coincidence that in lesson 101, it says God's will for me is perfect happiness. And then it says, lesson 102 says, I share God's will for happiness for me. Then it says, lesson 103, God being love is also happiness, right? So, and then it says 104 says, I seek, but what belongs to me in truth, which is that inheritance, which is that happiness. So what is that trying to tell us, Anna, is... God's will for us is happiness. And these are just a few lessons, but it's there's so much to be said about joy and happiness in the book. And I really wholeheartedly believe that that is really our true nature, like love is. And it's something that's always there. We just forget because we believe in the separation. We believe in the illusion. And we're always in that light. You know, that happiness is that light that we're always there and it's secure and we're so taken care of. And it's that light that we have and that connects us to God in the sense of when when we remember that happiness, when we come back to our true nature, we're just reliving and experiencing that we're not that we're still in the mind of God. So I feel for me, happiness is the closest way that we can experience being in the mind of God in the world of form, right? So we use that joy, that happiness as a memory of, okay, we've never left the mind of God. This is not real. This whole illusion is not real. God, I'm still in the mind of God. So in regards to happiness in the sense of the Course in Miracles and how to practice it, for me... I have, I had, I, I didn't understand why Anna and maybe some of you can relate to studying the course and not being very happy, <laughs> right? Not being, still struggling, probably not understanding, um, and not feeling that joy and happiness that the course is talking about. Okay, can any of you relate to that? Okay. Good. Me too. So that's, that's, that's the beginning part. What I realized is through my journey of the course, I did see my inconsistency of intellectually knowing things, feeling really good when I was in a group, but then not wholeheartedly applying it in the world because it was like a blind spot. It's like when you can't see the car in the mirror while you're driving, you know, it's like something you just, it's so unconscious you you have this willingness you want to wholeheartedly be happy but unconsciously there's something there that you are not fully living it and that you are making exceptions and compromises what does that mean it means the course is saying i am love and you're saying i am love but then you go into your life and you're looking for love outside of yourself right or i am abundance and i am perfect child of God, but I'm worried about money. And I believe that abundance is money instead of remembering that abundance is I am as God created me. So this inconsistency, Anna, of reading it, doing the lessons, kumbaya, all day long, 
doesn't get us anywhere. It's fine, but we need to begin to be very fo very focused and and with a lot of intention to apply it. But most importantly, one of the biggest things is you want to begin to forgive even if you don't want to. You know, there needs to be that wholehearted commitment to want to forgive, even though it's hard, even though you don't want to, even though you want to be right. You want to say not say to yourself, I'm done with the procrastination. I'm done with the littleness. I'm done with this, this excruciating pain of holding on to being right or believing that the problem is outside of me. I'm done with this victimization and I want to wholeheartedly begin to forgive in all areas of my life, even though it's hard, even though I don't want to. And I have to say that this takes something, Anna, and sometimes it isn't pretty and it doesn't feel good. And at least that's my experience. Okay. That's why I've learned to be comfortable with my feelings of inadequacy, my feelings of sadness, my feelings of depression, whatever feelings I may be having, I've learned to give myself grace and not to judge it. And there's nothing wrong here. Okay, there's nothing wrong. I mean, we're in a world of bodies, Anna. Some days we're gonna wake up really good. Some days we're gonna wake up not so good. It depends on the mind. It depends on the stars aligning and the this and the that and the mercury and the moon and the all these things, <laughs> what you eat right? There's all this stuff that's going on that we're going to be fluctuating in our energetic field and how we're feeling. So the what we need to do is for me, how I come back to the happiness is first of all, to have acceptance, right? To have that grace with myself and that there's nothing wrong here. You know, the course is teaching us, I don't know what anything means. Everything is the meaning I give it. So you want to start to be more of a mind of a little child and more of, you don't know, we don't know. Maybe the way you're feeling is exactly perfect for where you are actually taking yourself and where you want to be. So that feeling of inadequacy, that insecurity might be actually a stepping stone of something that you need and want. So the judgment goes away. So you want to begin to, to stop judging yourself and others and begin to see life in a more neutral context. Happiness is something that is innate in us. And it's something that is very natural, actually, like love. Just like, but the thing is that the world has taught us, Anna, that fear is normal. And that happiness isn't. If you tell someone, can you be fearful seven days a week, 24 hours a day, somebody will probably say, yes, that's normal. If you say, hey, can you be happy seven days a week, 24 hours a day is not normal, right? So what's happening here? What's happening here is that there's lies going on. There's there. This is the lie that we tell ourselves. Happiness can be very normal. And it doesn't mean that you're at a 10 ra, 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 every day, but that inner contentment can be there more and more and more often than not, okay? So I always say we're under the happiness umbrella, which is in the mind of God. In that happiness, that is our inheritance. That's what connects us to God. That's our true nature. And what happens is we leave the umbrella, which is always there, and we start to believe our thoughts. We start to believe our littleness. We start to have grievances. We judge. We believe we're victims. Now we're not out of the happiness. Now we're not in the happiness. We feel we're not in the happiness umbrella. But the thing is, it's just a moment of confusion. It's just the illusion. But what's good news is, Anna, is that that happiness hasn't gone away. That happiness is there. It's waiting for our return. But not even really because there's nothing it's waiting for because it's here. So in the moment that you begin to come back to your right mind... Through, through less judgment, you begin to come back into the happiness umbrella again. And the reason I say, why can't we collectively, and for all of you that are watching today and the ones that are going to see this later, 
for me, the movement is, is to begin to have a new conversation of that happiness is normal, peace is normal, flow is normal, joy is normal. I want to begin to change this narrative of fear is normal, it being ob obstacles are normal. How about the opposite day? How about the opposite day? And we begin to do this collectively in this world of illusion together, little by little, waking up our minds to the joke, right? To the joke of the ego, to the joke of the separation of the illusion. We begin to little by little, collectively, we're all light. You're light. I'm light. We're all collective lights. We're all connected to God. So how about if the lights start to have their super magnetic superpowers are like, you know what? We're all going to remember our happiness together. And know that this BS, this bullshit, that fear is normal, that separation is normal, we want to begin to have a new narrative, a new story, uh, a, a new belief, a new belief. And guess what, Anna? We're all worthy of it. We're all worthy of this remembering again of that joy. It's funny because um, I feel, and I've heard this with people that have near-death experiences, of that they see themselves in the light. They see themselves in the oneness. They see that this world is an illusion. And that's incredible because these people have actually have had, have had experiences of what the Course of Miracles is teaching. That's why I always recommend people to watch near death experiences because a lot of them have experiences, experienced what the Course is teaching. I just saw one recently, his name is, is Andy Petrol. And I, I'm actually just spoke to him the other day. And he was saying that joy he was talking to the light and that the light was going through his lifetimes and telling Andy, Andy, look, look how you made this so real. Look at that. Look how silly that is. You, you believe that, that, that story, you believed this fear and look at that. You made this matter too much. That's what the light was telling Andy. And it's funny because the light is, he says, it's funny. The light is humorous. There's joy in the light. It's it they don't but doesn't make things matter. It's like, oh my gosh, Andy, look at that. And we, they la it's a laugh, right? So for me, when I saw that NDE, it reflected for me in my life and my me being a teacher of the course for all these years, and how I teach. I teach with that joy. I teach with that humor, and now I understand why. It's because the light is that joy, and it's actually saying, and it told it told Andy this, and I've heard this myself. The light is saying, we're in the world to experience joy. We're in this world to experience joy, to experience happiness, right? The Course would say this world is dual. This is a dual um, dual world, and the Course is teaching it's non-dual, right? There's no duality. But it, we do experience duality in form, in the body, right? You're there, Anna. I'm here. We appear separate. The duality, right? Within the dual dual world, there's the memory of that joy, which, which one of the reasons we're here is to actually live out that joy. Because when we live out that joy, we all remember the memory of God again, right? In my book, I say something in regards to somebody asks, well, when, when did we separate from God? Like, when did that happen? When, when did that separation happen? And I always say it happens right now, right? I have no idea how or when and how it happened. I have an idea from what the course teaches, but my experience is that every single moment, Anna and everyone here, we're experiencing that separation or we're experiencing that union given the thoughts you are thinking and believing in the moment. So in every moment, you're either remembering your father or forgetting your father. And the great news is that the Course is teaching us that you get to decide that. You get to decide that. You get to decide if you want to perceive it through happiness. You get to decide if you're going to perceive it through joy. Now, that's easier said than done. When you wake up cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, yes or no? When you wake up cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, for instance, me right now, I don't know what's happening. I don't know if it's menopause. I don't know what it is, but there's some emotional stuff that I have been feeling. But the good news is, is that I'm, I don't, I don't feel it or judge it like I used to, 
what I do now is that I'm going through some emotional experiences right now of where I feel are good for me. They're part of the journey versus there's something wrong here, which is very different, right? Than how we usually do. So what I'm getting at is that that's how we practice the course by stopping the judgment on our emotions and that something's wrong. And what I'm trying to get at, actually, the point I'm trying to get at is that sometimes it's easier to practice than others. That's what I'm trying to get at. So sometimes I can, I can perceive good. I can perceive love right away. I can perceive joy right away. It's easier for me. But what I'm trying to share with everyone is those times that you are going through an emotional state that you don't have no connection. How many of you sometimes feel you have, you don't have any connection or just right? Yes. Thank you. I exactly. I'm not alone. Thank God. Hallelujah, man. <laughs> We're all together. So when you are going through this emotional state that you're like, I can't even meditate. I can channel, right? I feel like crap. That's how, that's been how I've been feeling in, in not my true self, but my separated self, I've been feeling this type of emotion. I'm using myself as an example. And what I've done is, is allow that to be what it is. I call it, feel it to heal it. It's like, it's exactly perfect. There's grace there. What we do, and I've seen with my one-on-one -on -one clients, I've seen with people I've worked with, hundreds of people throughout the years, is that when they're down, when you are down, you're down on the floor, and what you do is you continue to kick yourself while you're already down. You continue to judge yourself when you're already down instead of you're going through something and to not judge it that you're going through something because then it's just war on yourself. So first step is when you are not in your right mind and you're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and you can not study the course is to be okay with that. Guess what? It's not time to study the course. It's not time to be kumbaya. It's time to cry. It's time to have tea. It's time to get, you know, give yourself a foot massage. It's time to to go around the lake and walk or meditate. It's time for no, no course of miracles. Maybe you have to work. It's time to work. It's time to do your best. It's time to get through the emotions. When you get through the emotions, when you accept the emotions, it's like a wave, you know, it's like, and down, right? It's like you want to accept the emotion because then you're, you're going to begin to have a point of where you are going to have clear waters. You're going to feel better. But I want to start to share and everyone know that it's okay to be a hot mess, right? A hot mess means... You're crazy. It's okay to be a little kooky and crazy. It's all good. That's part of the healing too. And when we come to that happiness is when we start to accept it, we come back to presence. And we also have the knowledge of how do we not know that this isn't the best thing ever? How do we not know? And how do I know it's not the best thing ever that I'm having some hormo hormonal cuckoo-ness right now in my life? How do I know? How do I know it's the best thing ever? is because it's what it is. That's how I know it's the best thing ever is because it's, it is what is happening. The more that I don't want it to be, the more that I want it to be different, the more that I want my, de depre not that I'm depressed, but you know, the emotions to go away, but I'm speaking in general, the more that I want to not be depressed, the more I, I don't want to have anxiety, the more that I don't want things to be the way they are, we lose. I lose, you lose, and guess what we're doing? We're trying to play God. We're trying to play God. We're trying to replace God because we're saying, if this wasn't like this, I would be happy. If I didn't have this situation, I would be happy. And what we're doing is we're not trusting. There's no trust there. And we're not we're not allowing God to be God. We're, th we're more righteous than that. So we be, we need to begin to trust. We need to begin to understand that there's a reason for everything, even though it's super uncomfortable. It's part of the journey. It's part of the ride. It's welcome to the world of cuckoo. This is the illusion. That's 
energetically as souls, we've chosen to be in form. So now that you've chosen that, I invite you to begin to take responsibility for that choice and begin to do the work. What does the work look like? If I want to just wrap it up here, what does it look like? Stop the victimization. The problem is not outside of you. Never has and never will be. The problem is always in your thinking and believing, which is why the, the workbook lessons are so powerful. What you're thinking and believing about any given situation is giving you your experience, not the person, not the place, not the thing. Second, you begin to practice non-judgment. Non-judgment to the max. Guess what is non-judgment? Non-judgment is forgiveness. It took me like 20 years to understand that. <laughs> forgiveness based on the course. If there's anything you could take away today, don't make it complicated. It's non-judgment. It's neutralizing things. It's coming back to the mind of God, seeing things neutral. That is what forgiveness is. In a nutshell, I wish somebody would have told me this a long, long time ago, but I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready to understand that. And the third thing is that knowing first thing knowing that the problem is not outside of you second thing the letting go of the victimization the non-judgment and then lastly is to begin to integrate that knowing that now the best you can in your life the best you can the best you can in your life integrating that so i'm going to allow now because i've said a lot of things I'm going to allow Anna to sit a little bit and then maybe anything that's coming up or anything you want to share in regards to what I said. Um, I think that would be a good time to pause now. So I couldn't drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. So um, I definitely hear the practical application of the course in, 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 in your teachings. And I'm curious, do you still study the course? Do you still do the lessons? What, what does a... What does a usual day for you look like with the course? Um, I have to be qu quite honest. I don't pick up the course as much as I used to. Um, I feel like the first 10 years of my life, I um, I was in the book. Um, I also went to ministerial school based on the Course in Miracles. It's called Pathways of Light. That's how I became a minister. And through those teachings for three years, I had to really dis really study the course and meditate for three years after I became a minister and and then I began to teach it I do read from the course for teaching purposes um, but you wouldn't find me right now going over the workbook lessons at least not this year um, I do refer to um, the, the 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 workbook sometimes but I'm not avidly reading it anymore I've I've done it for so long <laughs> <laughs> now it's game time in the sense of applying it. It's so good to have it on hand for reminders and everything for me. I do tend to now um, listen to other things that support my Course in Miracles journey. One of them is The Way of Mastery. I like reading that in the morning, um, channeled by JM. It has a lot of course principles in there. I also really admire um, Byron Katie. The teacher, I feel for me as a course teacher, as a course student, I have found her work to be very profound and helpful for the understanding of forgiveness. What that means is, is that her four questions, when you ask these questions, that is her, her teaching, I feel that you're able to have the experience of forgiveness based on the course. I feel that it brings you there. So I'm always one to have C modalities that work not necessarily is Byron Katie of course teacher it doesn't matter there's no judgment there because we're all we're all in this together at the end of the day we all just want love we all just want to come back back to the mind of God so I always share with my community work from her because I feel that it helps the course student understand forgiveness in a way that it's not easy to understand just studying the book it gives you an actually ex experience of it. So the first question is, is it true? The second question is, it, is it really true? Sp asking about your thoughts. The third question is, how am I with the thought? And when you go to how am I without the thought, there you're back in the mind of God. 
right there, you're back in the mind of God. Right there, you're in the non-judgment. Right there, you're in the forgiveness. This is why I love her work. Um, so that's what I'm doing nowadays, Anna. When what I do is I I don't have something. I go through seasons. Some some sometimes during the year, I'm very. I wake up early. I wake up at five. I I work out. I'm very um, focused. And then there's sometimes during the year that I'm more introspective. That I don't work out so much in the morning. So it just really depends on the guidance and what I'm feeling. I do really suggest to everyone that it's important if anything you're going to do that's going to be the best spiritual practice you can do is to every day try to be more present, try to be more aware of your surroundings and also practice non-judgment. That's the best spiritual practice you can have. You can skip the morning, the evening routine. As If you practice non-judgment, that's everything. Wonderful. It's so funny you are mentioning the work. I'm teaching the work this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, together right we're, together we're the course of miracles yeah i'm a long amazing student of katie yeah oh i didn't know that Anna. are you a facilitator no. i'm 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 I, I used to be now now i'm just teaching it in the the context of a course of miracles Got because it. of the reason you just said yeah amazing so you know what i mean I do. I do. Definitely. And and that was uh, one of my questions, uh, because uh, when you talk about fear and how we accept fear as something natural, I can feel how afraid I am. I don't know who I am without fear. The fourth question, who am I without being fearful? Could you speak a little bit to that? To just let go of the self-concept of being afraid and a victim and, and a, 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 a world that could, you know, hurt me. Beautiful. Who am yes. I without that? <laughs> you know, it's there's that's such a great question. And um, maybe this will answer it and we can go over it a little bit more. But what's coming for me is, yes, it's it's not to be happy with the fear the the thing is is to be accepting of it yeah right so and that's the hard part it's it's the non-judgment of the fear right so it looks like this i don't know for me it's funny because let's say it happened to me a few months ago when and i saw it in action i was sitting on the kitchen my husband was there he said something i can't remember what it was but it it kind of brought up emotion in me um, I felt abandoned. I felt sad after he acts like that, right? So I felt it. I was sitting there. I can feel it, but it's different because I don't judge it. It's interesting. I believe he's my problem. This is very interesting. And it starts to go away because I, I see it. It can't, it can't stay there for long, right? So it's like it starts to dissipate, but at that part of be object being objective about it is is the is it's hard but it starts to become easier right so the fear's there oh my god he just said that how could he say that and and then i start and but then i i have like it, because of so much non-judgment and forgiveness that i practice it comes becomes easier that's why i always say the practice is important what comes up anna is right there i see the situation and i see okay this I'm feeling abandoned. I'm feeling rejected right now. And it doesn't feel good. And look at that. This is interesting. <laughs> I believe he's my problem. What happens is, is that I start waking up to God. I start to realize that he is not my problem. My problem is what I made it mean. Right? So what happens is, is that he leaves. I laugh because I realize, oh my gosh, I totally had a miracle happen because remotely this moment, I just woke up to what's true. So he comes back and I said, oh my God, Christian, I have to tell you something that just happened. Right now, you just lashed out. I believed you were my problem. And then I realized that you weren't. And it's hilarious. And he's like, that's amazing. So it doesn't mean that you accept negative behavior from someone. That doesn't mean that you don't talk about it. But it does mean is that start to see the way that your emotions come up and try to witness them 
instead of be them, if that makes sense. It's yeah. easier said than done, Anna, but I, maybe that helped, that story. Absolutely. And that is who I am without the fear. I start to laugh at the craziness. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like the... Um, it's those beginning lessons of I don't know what anything means it's I gave the meaning I, gave, I give it it's trying to come back to that you don't know mind it's sort of like oh my god like how why am I feeling this way like I'm feeling abandoned right now and questioning it in the moment instead of it starting to have momentum and you believe and then you are that fear yeah it's the questioning in the moment yes yes observing questioning presence it's like it's like you're here and you you can ob you can observe this yeah instead of it's here that means that means that the fear is with you it's more of you and it's it is and i have to say it's uncomfortable a little bit at the beginning but then when you're able to get over the phase of not and not not judge it and kind of laugh at it or be more filled with wonder like what is this emotion versus it's wrong that kind of snaps you out of it more too and makes you come back to sanity yeah and get to know oneself in in that identity the one who actually observes it and 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 are willing to see it in a different way and laugh yes yeah yes that, does your husband also study the course i actually met him at a course of miracles retreat mm -hmm. I met him at a Course in Miracles retreat. I met him in 2017 in um, Los Angeles. He was a volunteer at a retreat. It was, ironically enough, Anna called the Happy Dream Retreat. <laughs> yeah. And and I was one of the speakers along with other teachers. It was like five of us facilitating. And he was a volunteer there. And um, we had a connection at the retreat a more friendship connection. My book, Live Your Happy, was coming out. Um, this was February of 2017, and my book was coming out in March. And he was he's very computer savvy and very good with marketing and everything. And I feel spirit brought him because Live Your Happy was coming, and I didn't know how to promote it. And he was the one that helped me to promote it. He ended up saying, why don't we go on a book tour with your book, which I thought was insane insane you know how expensive that is he's like let's go on a book tour let's go around the world with the book and um funny enough and i met my husband february 2017 he ended up he was he's, he's german so he, he he lived in germany at the time and we ended up um feeling very guided by god to be together even though it was going very quickly because in april so we met february in april he asked me for marriage and then in a week later, May 6th, we got married. And then in July, we got pregnant. So it was a very fast coming together. And I still look at it. When I look at it now, it was so guided by God. There was, this is supposed to be, it was, there was no yes or no. It was just, this is going to be our journey together. And him coming into my life was interesting because it came, my book, Live Your Happy, was born, and he was an integral part on getting it out there. He's also a very integral part in me being a teacher because he's constantly helping me to do things, to do classes. He's constantly helping me with the technology. Um, he has his own business as well, but he is he's not afraid of my light, which is amazing. He's not afraid of my confidence. He wants me to be more there. He's like, please, you know, let everybody sh shine your light, do it. Um, and I also always wanted to be a mother, Anna. I, I was 40 when I got pregnant with Ari and I got, I actually um, gave birth to him when I was 41, which is in, in form level older. And there was no complications. I actually only had one fallopian tube um, and it was still very easy for me um, to get pregnant. I always wanted to be a mother. Actually, a year before I met Christian, I was looking to get a sperm donor, of which I ended up not doing because it was also guided by spirit to wait one year and see if I met someone. And I ended up meeting Christian that year. I called it my flirty 40s. So I was turning 40. I call it my flirty 40s. And um, 
it's been incredible. I feel that Christian is a symbol in my mind of, of healing a lot of past relationship issues that I had. I was a very codependent person. I looked for love outside of myself. Um, for those that have read Live Your Happy, you'll see that journey. I think it's time for me to write my second book after because Live Your Happy is all before Christian, all my, my teachings, and there's been so much after my relationship with him and being a mother. So I definitely need to do Live Your Happy too or something at some point. But for me, it's been so beautiful to witness my growth in relationships and that codependency healing and continue to heal. Um, and, and the love I share with him and also the allowing ourselves to just be, you know, and not making it matter. If he watches a show over there, I watch a show over here. If he doesn't give me flowers or if I don't, it's like, there's, there's very little stigmas in our relationship, which is nice. And also I feel really good within myself after so many years of work of, um, feeling comfortable and worthy of love of worthy of being in, in a loving relationship. So, yep, The Course in Miracles actually brought us together. And uh, my book, Live Your Happy, also was a big catalyst for us being together too. I'm looking forward to the next book. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's yes. open up yeah. for more questions. So raise your uh, digital hand or wave with your hand if you have a question. And if you want me to translate from Swedish, I'm happy to translate to ask questions. Do we have any questions? Lena, I will put you in a spotlight. <clears throat> also, this is this is nice when people watch it later. These questions help others also that are not here live. So yeah. Your questions, Anna, or anybody's questions. So yeah. I'm I'm thinking about a question or a clarifying around confusion. It's very easy to be confused when we start to to practice to to not judge. Mm -hmm. Confused in 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 like we had on on one of the meetings this morning. We want to make the world a better place and and and. The, the course says there is no world and, and I am confused in, in the two different kinds of, of thought system, the egos and the spirits. And I just get confused. You could speak yeah. about the confusion. Yeah, there's the intellectual part, right? The intellectual part of the world of of do I, there's we know that there's a dual world there appears to be a world and then the course is saying there's no world <laughs> but it appears very real right it's like do you do you see me okay and i see you so something is definitely going on here right so i think it's very 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 important to do what i just did which is acknowledge that there is a world because if it, it, that it seems to appear that there is a world why because if we just say this world is not real i feel it's actually very hurtful and disrespectful because it does appear that it is real so when you say oh this world is not real yes it's true it is very very true but if we're in a dual world and i still experience myself as a body when I say this world is not real, it's like I'm denying the reality of what I'm experiencing and that hurts me, right? So you want to begin to be more of, you know that saying, Anna, that they say you're in the world, but you're not of it. You want to begin to understand, okay, I appear to be in a world. I know what is the truth. I know that I, this is an illusion. I know that I am dreaming, but at the same time within the dream, by me not judging this and having acceptance more, I am able to be within the dream in a way that's not so hostile, okay? I feel that sometimes we make the course very analytical, very intellectual. The world is not real. This is an illusion. When we go too much into that, we lose sight of reality of that love because love is not denying the world 
How could you deny the world when you wake up every morning and you brush your teeth or you go to the bathroom? I mean, it's just, we we experience ourselves as bodies. So let's work there versus trying to deny it because that hurts. So when we want to make the world a better place, when we want to help the suffering, when we make the world war real and all that stuff, that's very worldly stuff, right? And there's nothing wrong to your question, Anna. There's nothing wrong with wanting to help in the world. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be kind or 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 help in any type of thing. That's there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing that is a hindrance would be you want to begin to get your head straight first. Because when you're trying to fix something outside, you're making it even more real. That's where the course comes in. So it's okay. It appears that people are suffering in the world. The problem is not outside. How can I help? Well, you can help first by getting your thoughts in check about what's happening outside. After you've made, gotten your thoughts aligned, then you can make a donation, you can go and walk and, you know, walk in with your sign and, and, you know, help that way, or you can travel or something that's guided, but you don't come from a space that you're saving something. You're coming from a space of, I feel very guided to support this organization. I feel guided to help this person. Although I'm coming from a space of the understanding that, this 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 is not what is really real this fear and at the same time you're going to it's kind of like when if you have cancer for instance you know you're going to acknowledge it you're going to learn how to love that cancer because if you don't it's just going to get worse or you're going to keep on giving more energy to that cancer. But regardless of it, you if you have the cancer, Anna, you're going, love is getting the best doctor. Love is looking for the best treatment. That's what love does. It doesn't mean that we don't do something in the world. If we don't do that, that's not very loving. I mean, even the whole context of the story is not very loving. So if you follow the guidance of taking the course literal, like this world is not real, so I'm not going to look for a doctor. Well, that's insanity. That's not love. That doesn't even feel loving. What feels loving is, okay, I have cancer. All right. I'm going to <laughs> love it as much as I can because it's here and I'm going to be accepting. And at the same time, there's a doing in the world, which is okay. When we get caught up in two of the extremism of Course in Miracles, which is the extremism that, that happens in Christianity, that the world is sinful and that you're sinful, right? That's the extremists of Christianity. There's a lot of course groups and a lot of course students that sometimes, and I've never said this before, it's the first time I say this, that there's an extremism in the Course in Miracles that is very, that hurts. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to go to the extremism because you are appearing to be in a world and sometimes it's very loving to do things in the world for certain things in your life. And that is what love does. And we do things in the world, but first we get our mind clear of where's the real problem. And then you want to go out in the world and you get the best doctor, you get the best thing that you need so that you can be okay. Does that make sense? That's the first thing I've said that, Anna, the extremism in the Course of Miracles. You guys brought it out. I don't know why, but there it is. There it was. Thank you for, for the answer. And it also means that, that um, you know, kindness and, and uh, um, loving actions and medicine and medication and, you know, everything is just fine, you know. Yes. 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 You got it there. It's fine. It's again, letting go of the judgment of yeah. that, you know, yeah. it's like, and being grateful that the medicine's there or whatever yeah. that is there, you know, um, again, it's, it's, it's letting go of the guilt of being in this world and functioning in this world. And, and it's okay. It's okay to take the medicine. It's okay to, 
you know, whatever it is without, as long as it feels in alignment to you and your true nature, I feel that it's, you want to do things in form and that is very loving. Yeah. That is a very loving act because God, God's will, again, going back to the beginning, I share God's will of happiness for me. God being love is also happiness. I seek what belongs to me in truth is God wants his children to be happy. So if his children want to do something in the world, I'm sure that a loving father is not going to be upset about that. So that's why we want to gauge what we're doing in the world and not become so extreme in extremist ACIMers. Don't become such extreme or ACIMers because <laughs> it's too it's it's just it's just it's too much. It's like being extreme Christian. Anything too extreme, it's it's not love. You know? Loco. It's loco. 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 <laughs> Yes, Anna. Yes. Local. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you, everyone. Could, could you stay? I have I have a, another question that, that is just for yes. you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Have a beautiful day. And um, I hope that everybody found this helpful. And everybody watching on Facebook and YouTube, much love. And remember... Practice the non-victimization, practice the non-judgment, and then forgive even if you don't want to. And just remember you have everything and you lack nothing. Ultimately, you have everything and you lack nothing. So thank you, everyone. Beautiful.